this is the second part of a dumpster build I'm doing. This one's about painting. Okay, here I have, I'm just going straight on the styrene. It's the life color rust base color. I find this um, paint pretty realistic when it dries. It dries kind of crusty and furry, so it looks like rust. Second section is I've got this wadding similar to you finding cushions and things and I'm spraying a dark shadow in the life color rust um, It just gives it a bit of texture in the rust As you see I'm just sort of going randomly around The dumpster here sprayed a bit under the edge there so it looks like it's been a bit damp Next is a light rust based or light rust shadow it's called. Um, I'm just doing a bit of random stuff here again. This one you put less a bit less on. It just simulates where the rust has been out in the sun and dried. You see I'm just going a bit random here, just more patches. This is just painted through my normal airbrush, 5mm airbrush. There you go. The paint was slightly thinned. I just thinned with um, a slight bit of water. Next, I wet the model where I wanted to have the rust come through paint. And then I sprinkle basic table salt onto the damped areas and it sticks to the water. So let's just sprinkle it where I think the bin has been banged up and knocked the paint off. And a lot, lots of it inside, so I just tip heaps in there. There you go, let that dry. Next up is some Tamiya acrylic white. This is the first layer of colour. I'm going to do two colours on this um, dumpster. This will end up as coming through like a primer you'll see in the finished project. Here I'm just um, sprinkling some salt on the wet paint. It's like a second layer of the salt technique. And then spray on some blue. This is the final colour of the dumpster. With the second layer of salt, you'll notice in a minute what I was doing there. The salt just acts like a uh, like a mask and stops any paint coming through to your bottom colours. And with the salt it looks like it's chipped, so here I'm just washing it with um it's just clean water. Well it was clean before I started. Hair dryer with a hair dryer. I've washed the most of the salt dissolves in water or you just a little bit of brush scrubbing there gets it off as well. And there you go. One rusty garbage bin. Inside where it's been banged up and things are in there. As you can see the white is coming through like it's got the primer and the top colour has been chipped off. Here I decided to add some more of the blue back on which parts I weren't happy with. So I just take a bit of sponge and dip it in the paint and then just dab on. With the sponge, um, you don't get a defined line and it, um, it simulates the rust a bit better and where the paint's been chipping. You can do this technique for all of it, including just adding the rust to the model, but I just wanted to tr do the rust on this one. It makes the paint a bit thicker. And it looks like it's actually been chipped off better. So I'm just going around the whole model. Sorry, it's out of frame here. I'm just filming with my phone. So bear with me. More dabbing, dabbing, dabbing. Next, I want to touch up some of the rust. So I put some of the rust base color in. And then as you see, I'm going along and dabbing where I want more of the defined rust just around the edges there. Next up, I've just got some weathering pencils. I'm kind of new to these. 
So I didn't do much. I did, did some streaky rust coming down. You just draw on with a pencil. You just dend, dip the pencil in some water and then draw on where you want it to start. And then with the paintbrush, you can do the streaks. Next up, I decided to do some graffiti on the dumpster. So I'm just um, doing like little graffiti tags. I'm kind of new to graffiti, so I just scribble random stuff on there in different colours. As you can see, a bit of a pink one there. It's hard to come up with names if you haven't done it and you haven't been a graffiti person your whole life. So I'm just doing random names and stuff. I just Googled some graffiti styles of tags and things and I just sort of have learnt a couple different ones. Next I'm going to do some graffiti on there. I'm just, um, these pens I'm using are just Posca pens. This is a point. This is a three, I think, and the other one was a one. So that was gold, and then I come on the outline with the small number one, just in the black. I've been doing a lot of graffiti on my dioramas lately, and I'm um, really enjoying just drawing again. Having an art background, I just getting to sitting down and drawing, so I add this to my dioramas a lot now. <clears throat> just doing some shadows. The trick here with some of the graffiti is to do it, don't do it perfect, do it like someone's rushed it to put it on there, and some just random person's done it. Next is some Tamiya panel line paint. Um, this is usually for, it just darkens in all the, uh, like where the joins and stuff are. It just gives it more definition, and if you just simply dab it in the corner, and it's running up and it runs it by itself along most of the joins. Sorry about my voice, it's a bit croaky. I'm just going around all the edges of all the detailing I've done, and I just grab the tissue to take off any excess. This just adds to it. If, you, if you're doing car models and stuff like that, um, it's really good for the engines. It just takes it a, one solid colour away and gives it a lot more definition in um, just the mouldings and stuff. As you see, I'm going here. You can get this in different colours, like a grey and a brown as well. It's also good for dropping on the ground um, to make like an oil stain. So I'm just going along the lines here, or any of the details I wanted to run down. As you see, I'm just dabbing there, so it just runs in all the lines by itself. A bit on there. Just cleaning off excess there. there. And these, I've actually put wheels on this now, so they're just um, from a kit. I tried to scratch build some, but it was just too fiddly. Um, and by the time I put junk in front of it and stuff, you're not going to see them much anyway, so the kit wheels are fine. And I also put a graffiti, some graffiti on the back. That's my nickname, so there's the one on the front. That's why I've come up with some of the ideas. I just use nicknames of people. Next, I'm going to fill the bin up. I've made these boxes out of just printing on my printer just with the cardboard colour paper and made, you can get box templates off, off Google. And then I made these garbage bags out of proper garbage bags, filled them up with tissue paper and then tied them off with cotton and stuffed them all in there just to fill it up. Looks like it's full. And then I have, I have a wheel here, so my tire. A tyre there, I've put it on sandpaper and got rid of the tread so it looks like it's a worn out old tyre. Then my friend made me these milk crates and this one was a failure in the printing. It's 3D printed and it was broken so we put it in the trash. And there you have it, a full dumpster. And this is where it's going, my diorama. Just in the back alleyway there. It's like it's an old auto repair shop and it's no longer in use so they just block the fence off with the dumpster. Next, I got some. I got a leaf punch from Green Stuff World, and 
made some stamped leaves out of real leaves. You just get dead ones from your yard. I just sprinkled it on there. And then kind of placed it where I wanted them. Sprinkle it around. I just want it around the bottom of the bin there. Just move some around. Next, this bottle has PVA water, PVA glue and some water. And just spray it over the leaves to, to hold them down. And just place the bin where I want it. And then chuck some garbage around the bottom. The bottom. Spare garbage bag. I scratch built this little uh, brick crap big brick pallet, sorry, and then weathered it, put that up there, and there we go. The dioramas are coming along pretty well. Got a lot more to do, and there you go. Thanks for watching.